This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to our Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Moss Valley. But before that, this video is brought to you by Schultz Modding and Big Joe Mamet. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Moss Valley map can be found over at the farmingsimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the one pointer release, this map is available for PC players only. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Moss Valley. With this dim map, you'll be able to tackle the challenges of running a farm in the heart of Sheffield. With accurate farms and fields, you'll be able to really get immersed in the experience, almost like you're really running it. There are multiple businesses that can take all of your products from grain to wood and everything in between. With built-in productions like dairy and bakery, you're going to be able to not just sell bulk crops, but also process them and profit even more. If you want to expand your farm with productions and you don't want to waste expensive fields, you can buy a placeable area either near the bakery or BGA or on the other side of the map near Carter Hall Grain Elevator. I hope you enjoy the map. This map features lots of accurate real-to-life models made for the map. 82 fields, small, medium, and big. 10 custom-made collectibles. They are hand tools. Four farms across the map to fit every play style. Buildings with lights and animated doors. Huge forest to take on. Custom tree foliage and ground textures. Hedges only have collisions for bales. Custom precision farming soil map. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Multi-terrain angle, mud system support, manure system support, built-in BGA and other produ pro production points, multiple cell points, UK license plates, two placeable areas, seasonal visuals, custom vehicle shop, seasonal hedge textures, custom lighting, a UK growth calendar, and, well, if that's not all, let's go ahead and jump on in. We are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps, which is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. I will tell you, if you load this map up in farm management or start from scratch, you will find that the main farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farm mode. In addition, you do have starting machinery in all game modes. The only exception in those alternate game modes is that you do not own any land and your bank balance will be different. Now, with respect to small or less, sorry, with respect to low powered systems, I did load this map up on a system with integrated graphics and I found the frame rate here at the local farm to be a little low. I suspect it has to do with so much going on. There's lots of machinery up here. There's lots and lots of buildings up here at the starting farm area. But if you get out and about from the farm area, then your frames are going to jump up and are going to be very rock steady at 60. But you may suffer a little bit of frame drop here around the main farm. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And just like the description said, this is a real life dem map. So this is a real life Google Earth image of the forest and the fields and the road layout, as you can see from the extension outside the map border. Go ahead and take a look at our lands overview. We start up by owning farmland ID 86. This is the main starting farm. We can buy this in any alternate game mode for $63,000. We also have farmland ID 33, 34, 39, 38 as well. Now with respect to the other farms on this map, there is a Sheep farm at farmland ID 88, just checking my notes, for $36,000. There are some bees that you can buy here at farmland ID 71 for $12,000. There's a cow farm just up the road from you for at farmland ID 89 for $28,000. And a small horse farm up here in the extreme northwest corner that is at farmland ID 87 for $37,000. $600. The BGA is located right here, and we do own that at the start. Let's go ahead and take a look. Sorry, at our crops. We do have all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22, as well as our premium crops if we have that enabled in red beets, carrots, and parsnips. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those are, if they include any field or fields, what is included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? I think as you can see here, we've got some pretty reasonable farmland costs. And farmlands are quite the varied size from less than one hectare all the way up to, I believe I saw one that was 25 hectares in size. Take a look at our field calculator screen. We can now cross-reference the actual field sizes with the farmland numbers and then see how much it might cost to buy any one particular field. With respect to our crop counter, as the description said, we do have a custom crop counter available on this map. Now, do note we do not have sugarcane or cotton listed as far as as far as having plant and growth schedules. So what that means, if you do play with the crop counter enabled, you will be restricted in not being able to plant and harvest cotton and sugarcane. If you do wanna do those two crops, you will need to turn off seasonal growth. Taking a look down through our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our basin crops that are available to us in FS22. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay straw, and grass. This continues down through our base game productions as we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game productions. One thing that we do not have the ability to do, though, is we do not have the ability to buy bulk lime. And we do indeed have a stone crusher, so if we are playing with stones enabled, we will be able to get rid of our stones. The platinum expansion production is not available. So if you do want to do any forestry that involves platinum expansion production, you will need to put down your own sell point. But lo and behold, the premium expansion crops and productions are available for sale at multiple sell points. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, there is no place to get rid of your separate manure without putting your own sell point down or just spreading it on the fields. And if you are playing with straw harvest, we do have a sell point for hay and straw pellets. With respect to our starting fleet, we start out with a decent listing of starting machinery, and most of it is fairly well maintained and is all owned. We do have at the start a chicken coop, a cow barn, pig pasture, and well, two pig pastures, two chicken coops, and a cow barn. We do have contracts available on this map, and we do not own any production chains. And as the description said, we have 10 custom collectibles. And those custom collectibles are going to look like small hand tools. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the New Holland T6155 small tractor. We have a Massey Ferguson 7716S medium tractor, as well as the New Holland CH7.70 harvester. We have the JCB54170 Agri Pro telehandler, the Brantner TA23071 Power Push Plus trailer. We have our 28 foot Verifeed grain header for our harvester. And then we also have the Nardi N6030 header trailer. We have the Agrimaz POV5XL plow, as well as the Lemkin Samgard 9500K cultivator, the Pottinger Terrasim C6F seeder, the Amazon ZATS3200 fertilized spreader. We also have the GMD 8730FF butterfly mowers and the GMD 3123F front mower. We have the GF8712 tether, as well as the Samez Z2840H windrower, the Kloss Reliant 455RC Uniwrap round baler and wrapper combination. And for our telehandler, we have a universal bucket, pallet fork, and a bale spike. Now, with respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements built in. Here at our main starting farm, we do start here at our farmhouse with our sleep trigger. And then the farm itself is going to be across the street. Here we are at the Povely farm. Now, as far as farms being customizable, as we have typically found with UK maps, Customizing these farms is pretty much not going to happen. We can sell a few minor things here at the farm, but overall, the farms are permanently fixed exactly how you see them here. Got some sheds for our vehicles and implements.
to the left. We do have a little bit of a debris pile. We can sell some of that. We got liquid fertilizer storage. And then we do have a covered silage bunker. We have a single grain bin in the Meridian bin. And then we do have a farm silo down here where we have our output pipe. And then on the other side of the building, we do have our dump location. Continuing down from our silo, we have a chicken coop. We're gonna be able to put 550 chickens. We then have a cow barn for 200 cows. And we have our milk fill point there. We're gonna have our straw and food trigger there as well as our slurry point. Got additional implement storage down here below the cow barn. Now on the other side of the silo, we're gonna find our egg spawn point for our chickens. Now one thing that we didn't really see, let's come back over here. So here we have, this is the, okay, here is the silo fill trigger. And then this is gonna be our food trough for our chickens. So it can be a little bit of confusing here because things are so close together, but this is our chicken food trough. That is our silo output. Do have a farm maintenance trigger here. And the harvester is parked right on top of that. So as I said, our eggs are gonna spawn back here. And we have one of our pig buildings, 70 pigs here. We have our food. We have another chicken coop, 250 chickens. And then we have our food there. And then we have another pig pasture for 70 pigs located right here and then our food for that. As far as our eggs for this chicken coop, they are going to be here around the back. And that is pretty much the main starting farm. Now let's go up here and let's talk a little bit about that soil map. So I'm going to bring up the log and we're going to scroll up here and I'm going to show you the entry where it should be for the soil map. So it should be right here. I'm going to make it the last line. We have warning nil found a soil map with wrong size. Nil soil map needs to be 1024 by 1024. So the custom soil map that is included with the map it's the wrong size. Now, what I do not know is, is I do not know if the soil map that we have up here at the precision farming is going to be the generic, not the generic, is a result of the custom soil map or if it's a result of the soil map being the wrong size. But the entirety of the soil map is loamy sand. Now, may make some may take someone who is familiar with the map itself to be able to put a comment in the video that states if the entirety of the map is supposed to be loamy sand or not, or if it's all loamy sand because the soil map is improperly sized. But I did go earlier and I couldn't use my script, which I usually use in order to basically show the soil map in its entirety in one fail swoop. I went through earlier and bought all of the land and exposed all of the fields, and they were all completely loamy sand. So again, that may be intended, or it may be a byproduct of the soil map that is currently included with the map being the wrong size. It needs to be 1024 
by 1024. Let's go ahead and take to the skies a little bit and we'll talk about some of our scoring metrics. You see that we've got a pretty good lay of the land here. Land has some nice fallout and it's going up the hill to the north. This map includes four built-in production items. We have a bakery, a dairy, a sawmill, and a biogas plant. We are going to be giving the map a full point there with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. With respect to the ability to sell our basin crops, animal outputs, and production points, we are also going to once again give the map a full point there as well because we do have the ability to sell everything. The only thing we cannot do is we cannot buy bulk lime, and we do not really take points off for that. With respect to the farms being customizable, this is where the map is going to lose the most points, and it's somewhat expected because it is a UK map, and that is typically the overall way things go with UK maps, and that is that you cannot sell most of how the map is set up so we're going to be giving the map just a quarter point because there are a few minor things that can be sold. So up here in the extreme north part of the map, we do have a sell point. And I believe this is going to be that buyable zone that was referenced in the description that is up here by this particular sell point. Now, some may reference the fact that apparently in the UK, it's against the law to do anything. So a farmer who owns his fields and his, owns his land and owns his farm can't make any changes unless he basically begs the community for permission. That's fine. But this is a game. And therefore, the players should be able to do whatever they want. And since the game allows you to customize things, then you should be able to customize things. If you want to play ultra-realistic, then you won't try to sell anything. But if you don't want to play ultra realistic or maybe you just really bad driver and you just really get hung up in one particular part of the farm all the time and you just want to do one little thing, maybe move a building over just a little bit or just get rid of a little bit of dirt or something, then you as a player should be able to do so. Now, I'm sure that we are going to have to agree to disagree on this, but you know what? This is how we rate every map. And at this point, we have nearly 350 maps rated for farm sim 22 using this metric and that is how we will continue here we have a sawmill which is on the extreme western or sorry eastern edge of the map so we have a dump point for logs we have a wood cell trigger we have a fill point for our sawmill and we have our pallet spawn point here we have our dairy so we have our interactive icon we have our dump point and we have our pallet spawn point. I don't know why, but I really like this blue tennis court. And here we have our animal dealer. So we continue to make our way down the eastern edge of the map. Just kind of look across the map now. You see those changes in undulation. You do see that we do have utility poles running across some of these fields. Those utility poles do have collisions. So down below we do have a grain cell point. Here we're coming up to the sheep farm. So down here at the sheep farm, we've got several sheds for vehicles and implements. The sheep farm does not have a sleep trigger at the farmhouse. So if you want to do that, you will need to put down your own. And then we have the spawn point for the wall is going to be right here. And the triggers are going to be over here. So let's go ahead and buy those. So we have our buy point for our sheep, 200. We have a water trough, we have a food trough, and like I said, here we have the trigger for the wool. The only thing we can sell at this farm is the actual sheep pasture and the sheep triggers. Here we have the, what I'm gonna call the bee farm, if you will. Got some sheds, 
And then we have three large beehives. Then we are walking or making our way now up to our farm. And then just past our farm, we then have another cow farm. You see our farm below here. We have a nice stylistic mix of old and new. So here we have the cow farm. So let's go ahead and pick that up. And I'll also go ahead and now pick up the horse farm that is in extreme north west we have the entrance to our farm we have some outbuildings some storage buildings another covered stylage bunker here and then the cow building is round back we have our slurry point our food and straw our cow delivery point for 60 cows and then we have our milk trigger there. A little bit of floaty objects going on here. And actually, that's not the only floaty floats that we've got going on. I, was, I saw this when I was looking around the map earlier. We got a whole patch of uh, debris that is here in field 30. Just kind of hanging around. Now, this debris does not have any collisions, so you should be able to continue to work this field until that is updated. I suspect it was supposed to be over here, and, well, I don't know how it landed over there in that field, but, hey, that's where it is. Our biogas plant is further up the road to the west. We've got a grain cell point. We have two three-sided silage bunkers. We have our digestate, we have our digester, our interactive icon, and our dump point for our liquid manure. Here we have our bakery, so we interactive icon, out spawn point, and our dump point around the back. Our vehicle shop is located right here. So we have our maintenance trigger right around front with our dealer activation trigger. Now that actually said vehicle workshop, so we might not be able to repaint our vehicles here. That is typically only reserved for dealer triggers. We also have a custom shop camera. Suffering some pretty bad frame rates here, but we do have a custom shop camera. And not the largest area for our vehicles to spawn in at here. But we do have a decent area to get out of the shop, but again, we've got these ultra narrow UK roads. So really, we're going to be looking at pretty, pretty small to medium machinery that can fold up very well for getting around on the map. We do have a cell point here and at this garden complex. Would have been nice if we could have made use of some of these greenhouses. They are all greenhouses we can go into. Then that is going to be a cell point. Garden center and garden center. So we're probably going to be able to bring our our bales over here. And then we'll make our way up this road to our final point of interest, which is going to be our horse farm. So with respect to buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique, as well as ground textures. Well, we're going to be giving the map a half a point here. And the reason is that so many, this not this building in particular, but so many of these UK buildings are using flat textures. They have just been around for a long time, and it's fine. They don't look too terrible bad, but upon close inspection, they really just do not stand up to the new building textures when they are right close to each other. 
So we are going to be giving the map just a half a point there. At some point in time, I'd like to see maybe if these, these textures can be updated. Eight horses up in this barn. Then we have our food trough inside of there. With respect to ground textures, we do have a custom, couple custom ground textures. Specifically, the forest ground looks fairly custom there. As well as the dirt. Fairly standard plants and fairly standard trees. And then lastly, with respect to player and interactive areas being clearly marked, we're going to be giving the map three quarters of a point there because we have had a few areas where they were less than stellar marked. So that's going to wrap this map up with a score of four out of five. I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to Moss Valley. Is this a map that you've been waiting for, looking forward to play? Are you into UK maps in general? And until next time, happy farming.